So right now I'm going to show you how to create reusable icons that you can use for your videos, for your design, all kinds of different things. They're going to be reusable and infinitely scalable, meaning they're going to look great small and look great big. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and last Friday I had the honor of going to YouTube Space LA and doing a presentation. So there's a fantastic group of creators that I gave the presentation to <laughs> on how to create icons and different kind of assets that you can use on your YouTube channels. But this also applies to anyone making videos or really anyone doing design, branding, any kind of identity. I'm going to show you how to create icons out of anything and reuse these icons very, very easily. I think you're really going to love what I've got in store for you. So just for fun, I'm going to go down here into my YouTube channel and I'm going to create a thumbs up like icon. So let me just pause that there. And if we look on here, we see there's the thumbs up icon. All I need to do is take a screen capture of it. So Command Shift 4 on the Mac will enable me to create a screen capture. I'm going to grab that area. Now that's print screen on Windows. All right. Now we're going to go in here. We're going to open it. All right, so there's our icon. Let's make it a little bit bigger. We're just going to choose image size. And why don't we make this in pixels? We'll make it about a thousand. Okay, so I'm just going to go into here and I'm going to use preserve details too. We're just going to use AI to try and get a little bit better scaling. Okay, looks completely soft, but for the purposes of what we're doing, this is going to be fine. Now, I just want to also let you know that we can also do it from your own artwork. All right, so it's actually quite easy to do. Why don't we start here? All we want to do is create a selection. So we're just going to grab our magic wand tool and we're going to click and this is going to make a selection around there. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Notice everything is selected except for our thumbs up. So we want to inverse that. Command Shift I, Control Shift I will do that or anything to do with the select menu, just go up here and choose inverse. So now we've selected the thumb. Now we want to create a path out of it. Super easy. Just go under paths and we're going to click here in the paths panel, make work path. By default, the tolerance is going to be two. Click OK. And now it's created a path. Now check this out. We're going to convert this to a custom shape. So all we need to do now is just go up under edit, define custom shape, and we'll see there's a thumbs up. Click OK. Now we're going to use this in a second, but before we do, let's have a look at this icon that I've created. First thing we want to do is just kind of clean it up. We've got this pencil here and some paper texture. So this is something obviously I just drew by hand. So let me just hit Command L for levels, and that would be Control L on Windows. What we want to do is push this to black, and we want to push this to white. So let's just push that all the way up, and then we're going to play around until we get a nice split. There we go. It's looking pretty good. All right, and this is just a pencil sketch, so you can imagine if we were using a pen, things would obviously be a lot darker and more solid. So let's click OK. The next thing I want to do is I want to just sharpen this up. So we're just going to blur it. Filter Blur, grab a Gaussian Blur, and now I just want to muddy this up just enough so the whole thing's all muddy. That looks good. And now we want to sharpen it again. Control L for levels, and watch this. Just pull in this, and see what we're doing is we're creating a nice shape right here. All right, that's looking pretty good. Doesn't have to be perfect, just good enough that we're going to get that shape. Click OK. We just make a selection around here. And I'm just going to fill it with white. So that'd be Alt or Delete Backspace just to kind of clean that up. All right, so there we are. Now we're going to make a selection, grab our magic wand. And let's inverse that selection once again. Select Inverse. OK, so let's make the path again. So we're going to choose Make Work Path. And this time I'm going to push this tolerance up quite high. Let's push it up to about 8. And then what that does is that just simplifies that shape. And that's looking pretty good, except there's a couple of areas I think we can make this better. So here's the thing. We can go in and we can use our tool here, our direct selection tool. 
and we can select any part of the path. So if we go there, notice it just grabs that particular point. So now what I want to do is sharpen this. So I'm going to click and drag this side in. Notice as I do that, we get this nice sharp area and let's grab the other side and see how we can just clean that up. Use the space bar to move, let's grab that point here and we're just trying to smooth it out a little bit. See, that's how we can move these paths by hand. Just grab these points and move them. Now I have another tutorial on how to use the pen tool. And if this part's a little much for you, don't worry about it. We will be moving on in just a second. So the way to get rid of that point is we just go to our pen tool, grab the one with the minus next to it, and we're just gonna delete that by clicking on that point. And now I'm just gonna go back to my direct selection tool and I can clean this up a little bit and now just to move one side hold down the alt or the option key and how are we looking we're looking pretty good path selection tool make sure we select everything so there's our entire path there and now we're going to go down and we're going to choose edit define custom shape and we're just going to call this logo. And now we've got the shape. All right, so now we've created the shape. Now I'm going to show you how to use them, but also to make them reusable and wait till the end. You're going to love some of the things we can do with this. All right, so let's just create a new, we're going to create a new set right now. So we're just going to create new film and video, choose HD, create. So we're just creating a background. Now, of course, this could have been any color or whatever you want. So we're just making it easy to work with here. So why don't I make this background a kind of a gray just to make it easier for us to see it. So I'm going to hit shift delete and we're going to grab 50% gray from the fill. Now this is not going to matter in the end. This just makes it easier. Okay, so we're going to create a new layer. And now I want to create some icons. So why don't we go ahead and go down to our custom shapes. Under the custom shapes, go up to our shape tool. You'll notice there's a few of them there. Now, if you want more, click in here and there's a whole library that ships with Photoshop and just about every kind of add on gradients, all kinds of things. And I'm going to click all and append and that will open up the entire library that loads with Photoshop. So you can see that we've got a whole ton of icons. Now, of course, there's the two shapes that we created. These don't come with Photoshop, but we can use those later. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some kind of a little icon that I can put on my videos. So let's choose this shape here, like kind of a speech bubble. Change it from path, we want to use shape. We want to work with custom shapes. So why don't we go for YouTube colors, which is just going to be a red fill. And in fact, if we want, why don't we give it a little white stroke? There we go. And just give it a couple of pixels. There we go. And now I'm going to drag this out. Now, if I hold down the shift key, it'll constrain the shape. So let's go to about there. And notice now we've got it like that. Of course, if you wanted to change the fullest stroke, you could simply click on there and adjust the thickness of that by just moving around like that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a like icon. Let's create a new layer. Still with our custom shape tool selected. Let's go to the thumbs up that we created. And I want to make this one white and no stroke. Of course, you can change this after the fact. Holding down the shift key will constrain the shape of it so we don't get it all distorted. Release. And if we look at that, there's our thumbs up icon. Now, the nice thing about this is it's vector, which means that we can scale this. It's not, you're not really going to see it there zooming in out but I can make it any size and it's going to hold its quality. A raster graphic like a photograph is set to an particular resolution, meaning it will look good at the size that it's created. Make it too big, it'll start to look soft and fuzzy. You, you've all seen that. And you get the jaggies around the edges or just soft. If you use a vector, it uses math to create it. So it's not set at a resolution. That means I can make this 50 foot or I can make it five millimeters and it's going to be crisp and sharp all the way around at any resolution. You'll see in a minute. All right. So what I want to do now is I'm going to put these into a group. Just select them both, control G for a group, and we're going to call it thumbs up. Okay, so now we've created a thumbs up icon. I want to duplicate this. If I hold down, make sure the whole group is selected, hold down Alt or Option and drag it out. 
And let's do it again. Let's make three of them. And we're going to call this one comment. So, you know, we've got this one here is to like a video. We want to make this one to comment on a video. So what we're going to do is go down to our shape. We're going to delete that, create a new layer, and then just go back into our shape tool. And this time we'll use one of the shapes that comes with Photoshop. Let's go down here. We'll just grab our little comment icon here. And I'm just going to hold down the shift key and drag it out and let it go there. All right. So now we have a comment. And just to show you that we can use these things, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to get rid of the shape there. All right. So let's create a new layer. Let's grab the icon that we created. There it is there. And we're just going to drag it in here. And we can see that we can easily create something out of that. Now, the nice thing about these are they are infinitely reusable. So now that we've created that shape, we can use it for all kinds of things from business cards to websites to video overlays, all kinds of things. So right now we've got all these icons just on one page. It doesn't really make them usable yet. Let's fix that right now. Before I do, just to complete this, let's just let me hit command J just for fun. And I'm going to call this one subscribe or just call it sub. And I'm going to delete that top layer. And oh no, have I just ruined it? No, I just created a duplicate as you guys remember. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this a little bigger. So the nice thing about these kind of shapes being in vector is I can select these at any time and they're scalable. So I can just drag this out. Let's make it wider and it's not going to lose any quality. Now, if I want to kind of make these corners look a little better, I can do that, but I didn't want to spend a lot of time on this. So let's just drag, grab these two and I'm going to hold down shift key and just drag them over. There we go. Same thing on this side. Let's just drag them over. And you can see how quickly and easily you can modify these. I went too far with those. There we go. So that's the nice thing about vectors. You can constantly reuse them. Let's create a text here and we're just going to call it subscribe. just to complete our collection. All right, so if we close this down, I'm just gonna call this logo so we know what it is. And let's delete the background just by simply selecting the background and hitting the delete key. All right, so now we've got four icons that we wanna be able to reuse whenever we want. So here's the thing, if you guys aren't using libraries, you really wanna start using libraries. This is where you can find them. Go under window, go down to libraries, and they're there, they're on Mac, they're on Windows, and they're not just inside of Photoshop, they're also in Premiere Pro and other um, applications. So here's a nice thing. I use them all the time. Here's one that I just created. This is the one we used for our class. Uh, let's have a look down here. You know, for example, here's my library of the assets I use for Photoshop Cafe. I use them for everything. And the nice thing about it is all these things are in the library. And if you ever want to use them, you just click and drag them out. And it's as simple as that. And you can drag them into any document or you can actually just double click on them and they'll open and then you can start using them so you don't have to look for them. All right, so what we're gonna do though is we're gonna create a brand new library. We're gonna go here, we're gonna create new library and we're gonna call it icons. And we're gonna click create. Now this is gonna give us a blank library. Now here's the nice thing about working with these if we put them in groups, this will work. All we need to do is just click and drag into there. Let's do it. Three, four, and now we've got these. So if we double click on any of these, they're gonna open in a window and notice they're trimmed right down to the size that we need them. So now I'm about to show you how you can use them in your video projects, but you can see how easy it is to work with libraries. Now, there's a lot more to libraries. If you guys are really interested in an in-depth tutorial on libraries, drop a comment and let me know. Um, if there's enough interest, then I'll create that tutorial. All right, so let's continue here and see what else we can do. Now, one of the things I mentioned about being resolution independent. So if we look at this right now, and I choose image size, just to show you, and we'll put this into, um, Let's put this into inches just for just for grins and gigs. All right, so we've got four inches. What if we change this to 50 inches? Now, normally this would cause an image to get really disgustingly blocky, but look at this sharp 
as a tack. And that's because we're working with these vector shapes. Now, here's the thing. If I want to export these, like say I want to use this thumbs up icon, double click to open it, and then I just choose File, Export. You could do a quick export to PNG, but in this case, we'll just do Save for Web so I can show you a little bit of what's going on. Make sure you choose a ping. If you choose a JPEG, it's going to have a colored background. It's not going to be transparent. Choose a ping so we get the transparent background. Hit Save. And of course, you can scale it to whatever size you want before that. And let's just drop it on the desktop and this is going to be thumbs up. So we just put an underscore before it so we can easily find it. Click save, done. Okay, so now I've shown you how to export it that will work in any video program. So if you're working in Final Cut or anything like that, you can just bring those files in, those pings and use them. But let's look at a special functionality that we have with Premiere Pro. So I'm going to create a new project in Premiere. And I'm just going to click in here and here's a video that I made at, at WPPI where I was doing some interviews with some friends. All right, so if we want to use these icons, check this out. We can bring it in, as I mentioned, and this is how you would do it with pretty much any program you're working on. Grab that thumbs up. It's going to come in there and we can just click and drag and move to it. And notice there it is and it's completely transparent so we can put it wherever we want on our video but i'm going to show you something even better check this out we'll just move forward a bit here go under window open up libraries and yes libraries are here inside of premiere pro as well let's choose the library we created called icons there they are and check this out I can drag any of these out here. There's my subscribe button. There's my thumbs up button. Let's zoom in a little bit. And there we go. So I can put my thumbs up in there. I can put my subscribe button in there. And all of those assets are available right now for use in any of your videos. And you can reuse them over and over again. Don't forget, you can also save these out as PSDs so you can back them up and use them later. But the nice thing about libraries on the Creative Cloud is once you're working inside of Photoshop, that gets synced to the cloud. So whenever you open Photoshop or, you know, Premiere Pro or other applications and you log into your Creative Cloud account, you're going to find those icons are going to be there all the time. If you don't have that account, as I said, just save them as PSDs and save them out as PNGs and you can use them in other applications so you don't have to be using Adobe Creative Cloud to do this. But personally to me, I absolutely love libraries. I'm shocked at how many people don't know they're there or don't use them because they are so useful. All right, so this is a different kind of a video than you're probably gonna see. There's not a lot of videos on this on YouTube or around the web. Are you interested in these kind of topics? And would you like me to do more of these kind of topics? If so, drop a comment underneath and also let me know, did you learn anything? And what would you like to learn? I know it's a lot of questions. You can answer one of those or all those questions in the comments underneath. I'm there. I read them all. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you like to smash the like button into dust. And if you love Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials, hit the subscribe button right now and you'll become part of the cafe crew. Also ring that notification bell. It'll pop up and say yes to the notifications, and then you'll know when I upload a new video, which is every single Tuesday. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.